Hello there. According to the official readout of today's Cabinet meeting, the Prime Minister and Brexit Secretary made it clear that they are seeking a bespoke Brexit deal for the UK. In looking to the formation of the UK's future relationship with the EU, the PM said that the starting point for the Cabinet's discussions today were the Lancaster House and Florence speeches. The official readout said, The PM said it was clear what the Cabinet's objective is. A deal which secures the best possible trading terms with the EU, enables the UK to set rules that are right for our situation and facilitates ambitious third country trade deals. It also said that both Theresa May and David Davis were looking to agreeing a bespoke deal for the UK that would be more ambitious than the recently struck EU-Canada deal. The PM, summing up, said the positions adopted by the government would be in the national interest and she was confident of building a dynamic post-Brexit economy which will deliver growth, jobs, prosperity and a better future, ended the readout. I wonder how long the optimism that the EU wants to do a sensible deal will last. I wonder how long it will be before it becomes apparent that the EU would rather damage its own interests than do us both a favour by striking a good free trade deal. We shall see. Anyway, do you recall the poll that came out over the weekend claiming that the Remain side had taken a 10-point lead over Leave, with Remainers all queuing up to say that, as a result, the plug should immediately be pulled on Brexit? Well, it turns out that not is all as it seems. The political analyst and former president of YouGov, Peter Kellner, has pointed out in a piece for Prospect magazine many of the reasons why the results of this poll should be treated with care. Not only does it appear to be an outlier, it has also been driven by a seeming huge shift in people who did not vote in the referendum. Then there is the question of the weighting of that non-voting subsample. To say this is not in any way to denigrate the quality of BMG's work, wrote Peter Kellner. Small subsamples of hard-to-reach groups must always be examined with care, for they are liable to trip up even the best research companies. BMG seem to have been unlucky, not culpable. And writing in Breitbart... Rahim Kassam said that this poll was being used to intentionally deceive the British public and noted that the pollster, BMG, had included a clarification to the poll results which said Readers should note that this poll does not mean that the British public think that the decision to leave the EU should be reversed, nor does it indicate strong support for another referendum. In fact, polling shows that there is very little support for having a second referendum. For more information on this, I have included links to the relevant articles in the description box below. But the message is clear. Don't let the Remainers mislead you with the results from this one poll. So, former Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg has made a video on how to stop Brexit, has he? Now, I'm not linking to that video, nor do I advise leavers to watch it, as the combination of increased blood pressure coupled with sides splitting from laughing at it may well damage your health, and watching it will also only encourage them. In the video, our Nick says we haven't seen any of the benefits of Brexit yet, failing to point out that Brexit is not here yet and won't be until March 2019. But the best bit is when he says that people, get this, should join the Labour and Conservative parties and then lobby those parties' MPs to get them to reject leaving the EU. Typical Ramona thinking anything to thwart democracy, especially as the Lib Dems have just been fined £18,000 for breaching campaign spending rules during the EU referendum and failing to provide acceptable invoices or receipts for 80 payments worth more than £80,000. Now, the co-chairs of Leave Means Leave have written a joint letter to Theresa May's cabinet urging them to stand up for what is in the best interests of the United Kingdom in the Brexit negotiations. 
In the letter, Richard Tice and John Longworth explain how they have been inundated with letters from people on both sides of the in-out divide, all of whom were upset at how the negotiations were being conducted, and that as they see it, the current proposal is not in the best interests of the UK. The proposed regulatory alignment is completely unacceptable and incompatible with the vision of Britain leaving the EU. Only by diverging from EU rules and regulations from March 30th, 2019, can the UK fully enjoy the economic benefits of Brexit, says the letter. And it goes on to say... The litmus test by which Brexit must be judged is whether the United Kingdom is in a position when it leaves the EU on March 29, 2019 to deregulate, including the removal of external tariffs, manage migration, capitalise on global free trade opportunities, abolish the common agricultural policy and repatriate fisheries, end the net £11 billion a year paid to the EU, set our own tax regime and have a more competitive currency. Under the current proposals from Brussels, the UK would be nowhere near passing such a test. And finally, the latest industrial trends survey from the CBI shows that manufacturing order books were at a three-month high during the three months to December. Anna Leach, CBI Head of Economic Intelligence, said, As we head towards the end of 2017, UK manufacturers' total order books remain at a near 30-year high, with export order books remaining at their strongest since the mid-1990s. While the lower level of sterling continues to support exporters, cost pressures remain intense, Businesses will expect to see the government's industrial strategy make rapid progress next year to support manufacturing and the wider economy in every corner of the UK. Now, had we not voted for Brexit, would the value of the pound be as favourable to exporters as it is now? And you'd have to wonder what state our manufacturers' order books would be in right now, wouldn't you? What do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.